Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life, but we don't take life too seriously, and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen, and today we have Tintu here, and we are talking about the pressures of marrying Kananaya. Cue the intro. series is on marrying Kananaya and getting different perspectives, both male, female, different ages, different marital statuses and whatnot. So Tintu is a 30-something, right, young man <laughs> from New York and now living in Houston. And you um, are married and have a couple children. You also married a Kananaya woman. So I'm excited to have that conversation with you because, you know, me and you kind of have a similar story. Definitely differences as well. So I'm excited to, to kind of dive into this topic with you. So how would you define the Kanani community? The Kanani community is a subsect of Malayali Christians um, that we have roots back to uh, Syrian roots. Um, and we practice uh, endogamy to kind of keep that culture alive. Um, and for the most part, uh, we say that our cultures and our uh, rituals are all derived from our roots, and we try to maintain that through uh, keeping the the bloodline, uh, for lack of a better term, yeah. uh, right? To keep the bloodline uh, going. You growing up in New York, what was that like? Where, how were you involved? What was the Kanani community to you? The earliest memory that I have of being exposed to the Kanani community is pretty much kids club. I don't really ever remember like my parents like talking to me like, hey, this is like what you are. This is what we are, right? I don't ever remember like conversations like that, but I just remember um, I had like two church communities, right? I had my um, Roman Catholic St. Nicholas, you know, that I went to in Queens, um, which is our like multicultural American church, right? Um, and then I think at that time, like once a month or, you know, it's not, we didn't have um, like an established church then where we had the availability to go every week, right? I feel like me and you met at like a convention probably, right? Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as you got older- I think there's so many people like our age that like we all know each other. We probably can't remember when we met, right? right. We met at a convention at some point somewhere. Right? Yeah, it was either like on AIM or a convention for me. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. yeah, and it's hard to remember like where and yeah, when. Yeah, AIM, AIM was a big part. I feel like kids don't know AIM anymore. Yeah, there was um, there were all these chat rooms, and I met like so many of my Kanane friends from, which is like, which is how I have so many friends in different cities, because of mm. these conventions and through the Kanane community. As you got older, did you feel like pressure to marry Kanane so you can like continue this tradition? I don't think I did. Parents never really gave me that. Hey, you have to marry Kanane or anything like that, right? I think it was a little unsaid with my dad. Uh, I think he kind of just expected it, like, oh, yeah, you're in Mary Cat. And, like, uh, he kind of had the same kind of um, expectation for my sister. Um, but it was never, like, a conversation that was had. But my mom, I knew for sure that it, it wasn't a need for her, right? She was like, yeah, find someone Christian, find someone good, right? Um, and that, those were the kind of conversations that we had growing up. It was something that kind of came organically to me, just uh, being a part of the community and having... Uh, and I was never someone that was like super like, yeah, pro con right? Like I, I liked it. I liked being a part of the community and I didn't really go to that many conventions. I think I went to like one KQL convention maybe, right? Um, but it kind of just came naturally. Like I, I kind of leaned towards that way where I saw myself with someone kind of, but if it didn't happen, it was never, it was never like a checklist item for me, right? Yeah, for sure. And I, I think we both kind of share the same feeling like it just kind of happened, right? Like it happened yeah. organically um, because of the people that were in our lives. So I had Kanani people in my life. And so, you know, I met Sanu when I was young and then we, we were in our, each other's lives and then like a relationship happened organically. So I have family that has not married Kana. It's never really an issue, um, at least for me, right? At least for me and my, like for my parents, um, there was never like, oh my God, I can't believe they're doing this or anything like that, right? So um, I think, especially amongst our cousins, we're so close. Like I, I have a pretty large family on my mom's side, so we're, we're all close. And um, we, you yeah, know, accepted that they're a significant other into our fold, like 
just like they were one of our cousins, right? Like, I understand why people really care about it. My opinion is just like, it's so hard to maintain and expect because you're in America and you interact with so many different kinds of people that like yeah. a relationship, feelings, like a connection can happen in another way. Yeah, I mean, even in India, um, there's plenty of people that don't marry within the Kananaya culture, right? But And I've had family members that like won't go to a wedding if it's a non kanawa wedding, right? Um, to that level. And I mean, who am I to judge, right? Like that's their opinion and that's what they practice. But like, I've never like, felt that level of like extremity, right? Yeah, it's it's your choice, right? Like you're gonna spend this life with this person, right? Um, so you should you should be with someone that you can share your life with, right? And yeah, I don't understand that stuff because like I like I feel like family is family, right? I think there's a few few parts of that. I think family is family, so you like support your family, and then the other part of it is the idea that you know what's better for someone else, and I think that's. Right. part of our culture right like our parents know what's be best for us and whatnot and mm -hmm. or you know or that family member knows what's best for them but it's just kind of an interesting thing like that part of their identity is so important that you would like miss an event right. but i mean i'm not one to judge either but lo low-key i think it's kind of crazy <laughs> our values uh in marrying within the community right i think you know we always know oh you know this person and moms like cousins daughters sister, right like that you, you'll always be able to make a connection right I yeah. feel like there is a connection that exists in our community um, that you know you can't really emulate outside of it right and and not to put it like on a pedestal or anything it's just it's just like uh, intangible right that's there um, where yeah if you married someone outside of the community you can be happy you'll get along with their family right like I, I don't think there's a drawback from not marrying within the community either. I think there's just uh, that little, um, at, you know, that little thing that you can't put your fingers on, right? That That's there. I mean, it's low key, like you have like a background check on people, <laughs> right? right. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like, you know, it comes with the territory. I think that's good because then, you know, family members, people are connected and stuff. But I think a part of it could be a little bit of a drawback is um, there's like this pressure to be perfect because like everyone's so connected oh what will this person say oh people will know that about you i mean that happens in any community right like it's not just kanana yeah. people yeah, i think that will happen in the malayali community right it'll happen in the indian community right so you can you can extrapolate that out like as much as you can right it'll be a little more concentrated within the kanana community but uh, i think you can definitely draw the same parallels to it any community that you're in. I personally think um, with wedding planning, like my, planning my own wedding, being Kananaya, and it might just be also my personal situation where I thought it almost made it more challenging. And I think it's because both of my sisters didn't marry Kananaya. So there were like little things that my parents were like, we have to do this right, Shireen. And I'm just like this, like, you know, free spirit. And I'm like, why? Like, let me just live. Like, let me do what I want to do. But it was just like yeah. this pressure that they were like, okay, well now you're marrying a Kananaya person. So we have to do it like the way that you're supposed to do it. And I get it. I understand like, the reasoning for it and this like the specialness of that but um it definitely made things a little bit challenging for me just because i'm not a very traditional person the last thing i wanted to kind of talk about is when there is someone that mar marries like non kananaya and if they have like kananaya traditions at their wedding what you think about that put it very simply i, I i'm just not about it right <laughs> to be honest right um i'm not gonna like run up in the middle of the ceremony and like stop it. I value the tradition that we have, right? And I value like how far it goes back and the rituals that we have and like the the meaning behind it, right? And the sanctity of a lot of it. Um, and I feel like it gets a little watered down um, when you do it in um, ceremonies that are not exclusively kind of right? So if a kind of marries out, when you incorporate those, I feel like both parties don't have that same level level of um, respect or like reverence for it so it just kind of gets a little diluted. I think a lot of people share that opinion and I, I mean I was smiling because I knew like that was coming like, and I wanted to also talk through it and kind of share my opinion and, and um, you know demonstrate that two people can have like different opinions and we can have a respectful right. conversation. I understand your side of it and why a lot of people think that way. 
I also see one like how traditions have kind of adapted and changed over time like one thing that I noticed like when I went to India like small things like um like how they don't change into the mandar godi before they go to the reception like and how that's like a big deal in America for some people or like they don't use the velika in India when they um light the velika at the reception they use like a candle so how I look at it is like traditions are kind of always changing with time and so that because of how we're in America now and things are different I feel like if you have a connection and you're Kananaya um, and you feel connected to these traditions I don't feel like I have the right to say what you're doing at your wedding I guess and like and I don't feel um, offended if you were Kananaya and you um, and you're marrying a non Kananaya and you're having these traditions but that's just my that's my opinion um, and I also feel like it kind of allows for it to live for longer if we are continuing these traditions um, to people that f that feel connected and have like a special connection to it. Because I'm a non-traditionalist, like I feel like yeah. traditions can be adapted and um, you know kind of made your own, and so I see like the opportunity to kind of continue the conversation and the history and um, like understanding and learning of it by continuing it. The traditions definitely do um, adapt, right? So if you look at, you know, a lot of things now like social media is very prevalent, right? And people are taking pictures and videos more. So they do a lot of things. I mean, people are doing everything for the gram now, but even like 20 years ago, they were doing everything for the video, right? So like, even um, like the Nellum Nidam, right? Like they do it at the reception now, but before it was really only like when you're getting back to the groom's house, right? So like the, the custom in that was actually, you know, to receive the bride into her new home, right? So that's like the custom and the, um, the, the meaning behind it. But now like, yeah, let's put in the video. So let's do it at the reception now. A lot of things do change, um, but I feel like if you don't really understand the significance behind it, it kind of gets lost also, right? So even the kacha, right? When the, the Amechan is giving you the like new clothes, right? And then uh, he's making that motion from your hips to your arms, right? Uh, if you look at it back to like the significance of it, it's Abraham telling, and again, I'm not like a scholar on this, just from what I've learned, right? Like this is what I've learned throughout the years or from either my father-in-law or my uncle, right? Um, like that significance is saying like, hey, you're a part of my tribe and you'll continue to be a part of my tribe. So then when you do it, when it's like a, a mixed ceremony, right? Like it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because you're saying, hey, you're a part of my tribe, but you're really not, right? And yeah, you're becoming a part of my tribe, but it, it's, it's weird, right? Like what you could say is like, you're a part of my family now. And I think like yeah. what you were saying about like Kanani traditions, I used to like do wedding planning. And so, um, I, was, I learned about like the Kananai traditions more through that and a lot of people didn't know like what the traditions were. They're like, yeah, we'll just do what we everyone does. And I'm like, yeah, but like, yeah. what do you want to do? Like, you know, which traditions do you want to do? You want to do all of them? Like, do you know what they are? Like, you know, they didn't know like who was supposed to be a part of the traditions. And I definitely don't know as much as you do. I didn't know like actually what that motion meant. Um, and I don't even think my parents honestly did. Um, I think yeah. I asked them. And so I think that's a big part of it is like learning about these traditions. So I mean, I think it's like all of, like a personal decision. And obviously, like, you know, you know, it what the decision is going into it. And, um, you know, I just am I just wanted to have a conversation on like, the Kanana community and because you know, it is a big community. And I think also, I don't know anyone publicly having these conversations and I think right. this series is to just like, you know, just talk about it. Like, you know, I think a lot of us yeah. maybe have these conversations privately, but to do it in like more of a public space, encourage more conversation among each other and then hopefully like people will connect with us and, you know, share their opinions and share their thoughts and maybe they'll learn something new. Like I'm sure someone's going to learn something from that Abraham, like the Kutcha yeah. <laughs> point. And, um, you know, or, and like, maybe just think a different way. My whole thing is 
being more open and being more transparent, I think, can lead to more conversation and we can learn from each other. I think we can heal more. I think there's a lot of like, you know, trauma and a lot of things going on inside of people. And so that's my biggest thing. And that's like the reason why I have this show is to have more conversations. And so I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone that watches the show and supports the show. And um, if you ever have any ideas and you want to have a conversation with me, please reach out to me. Um, I have conversations via Zoom and um, I love doing it in person. But, you know, like with everything going on, it's kind of in a weird place. But I appreciate you, Tintu. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye.